Holy cow! The entire state of Indiana is here in my studio. I can't believe it. And I'm totally not ready. Let me... Ted! 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 He's never here when you need him, of course. Off causing trouble somewhere. Some neighbor's house. I'm sure we'll get a call later complaining about him. But thank you guys so much, the teachers, librarians, the children of Indiana, for honoring me and the great giant fat pink rabbit with the Young Hoosier Book Award. It is a true honor. And I'm terribly, terribly sorry I can't be with you guys today. Uh, I really wanted to come out. But we've been really, really busy these last few months. Um, the Spiderwick Chronicles is being made into a movie up in Montreal. So my wife and I have been going back and forth up to Canada to check it out and make sure it's coming along. And also, I've been on book tour for my latest book, which I want to show you guys. This is it. G is for one gazonk. We've been on the road for like a month out promoting this thing. And the reason why I'm telling you guys about it is... Da -da -da! This is the birthplace of Ted, actually. You see, I had just finished my first picture book, Jimmy Zhang Wow's Out of This World Moon Pie Adventure, and I wanted to do this silly alphabet book next. I showed it to my editor at Simon & Schuster, Kevin Lewis, who's done all my books, and Kevin flipped through and said, you know, the alphabet book's good, but it's not quite right yet. You need something else. But I really, really love this character here, this giant, fat, pink rabbit thing. I want you to write a story about this giant, fat, pink rabbit thing. And so that is actually the genesis of where Ted came from. Um, the characters in Ted were inspired a little bit by me and a little bit by my family, but I got to clear a couple of things up first. The father in Ted is not my dad, actually, although the boy in many ways is me. See, I was the oldest of three kids, uh, and my mom stayed home with us and raised us all where we drew and did origami and did all kinds of cool stuff. And my dad had to work. He worked um, you know, five days a week, usual job. Uh, nights and weekends, he'd come and spend time with us. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he only had a little bit of time to do that, and so he tried to make it special. And one of the things I remember is I did get caught drawing on my walls in my bedroom when I was a kid. I got in a ton of trouble for doing it, too, and I had to clean it all off. My mom made us clean it all off. But when my dad got home, he had actually stopped by the grocery store and got butcher paper, that white butcher paper that they wrap meat up in. He'd gotten a whole roll of it. And he tacked it up on my walls in my bedroom and said, now you can draw on your walls. And that's how cool my dad was. So the dad in Ted is not my dad. <laughs> I got to let him off the hook. He's always like, ah, they all think I'm a terrible father. It's not him. Actually, the dad in Ted in many ways is me because I'm a workaholic. I love to work. I love making my books. I love the process of it. I love sharing my books with kids. And so I was worried that if I was to have children, that I'd be so obsessed with making my books, I'd never, you know, spend time with, with my kids. Of course, that's not the case, but it, that fear was a real fear, and that's where I got the inspiration for the father of Ted. The little boy was definitely me as a kid. I was a quiet, kind of shy little kid with a real crazy creative mind, and Ted is kind of an extension of the little boy in me. He's kind of like the little devil guy on your shoulder. It's like, I've got a great idea. Let's make a swimming pool in your dad's studi study. That's totally where Ted came from. Or he's like your crazy uncle that gets to babysit you, and he's like, I got a great idea. Let's make a bike ramp on your roof. That's where Uncle Ted, Ted, came from. So um, it, it all kind of came together once I kind of knew who these characters were, and the book started to come together. So a lot of people ask me, how do you make your picture books? And Ted is actually a great example of my process that I go through in coming up with my story to the final book. It starts off with the written word, the story. That's the map. That's what I need to use to go from to put my illustrations into a book. Ted is actually a little different because Ted originally was going to be a chapter book, a longer story, and it had all these adventures about this boy and his imaginary best friend. Well, what we realized early on is it may not appeal to an older reader, a 9 or a 10-year-old, about a 5-year-old and the adventures he has with his imaginary friend. So we scaled it back to a picture book, which we figured would be a little more age-appropriate for our hero. Once we figured that out, I went on to make the book dummy, which is basically just a handmade version of the book. It's where I cut out the text and paste it onto pages and do sketches of all the illustrations and figure out what illustrations will be matched with which text. Once that was done, we started figuring out and planning all the paintings. Now, this is where I have to set the mood of the book. 
I want the viewer or the reader to be able to know kind of a mood of a book the moment they pick it up and start flipping through the pages. And that's accomplished by the visuals. The first thing I thought of was, well, I wanted Ted to feel like long time ago, like long, long ago, once upon a time, but I didn't want it to be so far back that no one would be able to relate. So I thought, what if I said it in like the 1950s or the 1960s? I grew up in the 70s, so to me, the 50s represent Leave it to Beaver. They represent Norman Rockwell paintings, and the, which is really kind of a different Americana than what was really happening, but that candy-coated uh, vision of the past was something I really, really liked. So once I started looking at Norman Rockwell as my inspiration, that's where I came up with how the dad would look, how the kid would look, how the house would kind of look. Into that, I wanted to introduce a chaotic element, which was Ted. And Ted was very much inspired by Dr. Seuss and the Muppets from The Muppet Show. In fact, some of the people that I showed the original black and white sketches to were a little freaked out by the way he looked. He was kind of scary. So I thought, what if I make him pink? Would he be as scary then? And they were like, really? You'd make him pink? I'm like, let's make him like Pepto-Bismol pink. So he's not like a cute fuzzy bunny, but he definitely you're not really sure what he's going to do next, what he's going to say next. And that's what I wanted, that little bit of edge to him, just like a good Muppet. So once that was set, it kind of got my wheels turning about the colors of the book. And I thought, Ted loves to eat. The boy eats a lot in the book. Be kind of cool. Maybe we could do something that relates to food. And that's where I got the idea of an ice cream color palette. So the darkest darks would only go to like dark chocolate and the lightest lights would only go to vanilla. And in between you'd have pistachio and sherbet and all these cool colors. Once all that was set, I started doing all the paintings and I knew that the tone and the mood for the story of Ted was set. I've traveled all over the country on book tours, visiting schools, reading the kids all over the place. And the question that I get the most is, what was the your most favorite book that you created and I'm not hamming it up here when I tell you guys that I've always had a soft spot for Ted and I think it's because Ted works kind of on two levels it's a story about a little boy and his problems and it's a story about his parent and the problems they're facing as well I think that's um, something I really strive for hard in the book and I tried to remember stories that I was read to as a kid by my mom that I still held on to to this day and one of the first books that came to my mind was The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. I loved that book so much. I loved a lot of the books that Dr. Seuss did, and I think because they were working on two levels, and that's what I really wanted to happen. I wanted a child who was reading this book to really see a lot of the fun stuff that was happening, but also maybe the adult who was reading it to go, wow, there's, a, there's another story that's going on here as well. I want, when the books that I created, I want there to be a... Um, a shared experience. I really hope that that it's a librarian or a teacher or a parent that's reading to a child. And in, in thinking that way, I want there to be some really funny stuff. There's a lot of really silly things that happen. But I also want there to be a little bit of a seriousness to it as well. Something you can remember that you take back with you after you've finished reading a story. And I think in the case of Ted, there is a little bit of that. There's the um, the, the, the loss that the child is feeling because he wants to spend time with his parent. And then you have a parent who's been kind of weighed down by the responsibilities that many of us adults have. I think it's easy to forget about uh, playing hopscotch or a board game or something when you flick on the news or you've got to pay your bills or do all the things that we have to do, these responsibilities. And so what I wanted was there to be this kind of rediscovery of the father finding his childhood again, what it was like to kind of loosen up and, and have a good time. And at the same time, the child was able to kind of maybe understand where the dad was coming from and that we do have responsibilities uh, as we get older. And so, and, you know, last but not least is just good old Ted and that hopefully all of us have a Ted inside of us and we just got to let it out just for a little while and be a little silly and be a little crazy. I think it's good. Okay, seriously, what you guys are here for and what I'm here for is not to listen to me babble on for 15 minutes about how amazing and great I am. What we're really here for is so that I can thank you guys, the state of Indiana, for awarding me and Ted with the Young Hoosier Book Award. Thank you guys so much. Thank you parents, teachers, and librarians for sharing my books with youngsters. And thank you kids and children of Indiana for picking us as the winner. I'm so honored. I wish I could be there, but I promise I'll see you guys really, really soon. Thanks a lot. Ted?
Ted? Ted! Get down here! He's never here. He's never here! Thanks. See you guys. How much digital is he? Uh, why Ted's important to me? Take... 500. She kind of smells like a potato with legs. Digital is he? Process take two. <laughs> and someone's at the and door. There's Ted! He's here! And cut. <laughs> smell. Oh, God, I think she farted. <laughs>